let's cover a variety of situations where we're pulling camera animations from Blender into Unreal Engine. We'll look at simple camera motion, advanced camera rigs like the crane or dolly rig, as well as organic looking handheld shake. The good news is all of these scenarios use the same technique for bringing over the data. Let's go. start in Unreal with our finished environment. Of course, Unreal has powerful camera tools. If you're like me though, you're accustomed to animating your cameras in something like Blender or Maya. So the first thing we wanna do is to get a scale representation of our scene with simple textures from Unreal to Blender so we can create all of our camera movements within Blender. To do that, just go to File and Export All, choose USD as the Save As file type, if you don't have USD as an option here, it's because you need to enable the USD add-on for your project. This comes with Unreal. You can do this through the edit menu and plugins. If it's not enabled already, it'll just have you restart Unreal. In the USD export options, we can choose to bake a representation of our textures in a way that'll turn up within Blender. To do this, just select bake materials to save on time and file size, and because this is just a placeholder, in the material baking options, I'd go with a low resolution. In our case, 128 by 128 pixels should be enough. USD also has a great tool for matching scene scale. There's an attribute embedded within the metadata of every USD file called MPU, or meters per unit. All you need to know is the unit of measurement in your target software. In our case, Blender uses meters as the default unit of measurement. So here, we'll set it to one meter per unit. Let's call it good there, since all we're really looking for is placeholder geometry to know where our cameras are going. It'll take just a minute to bake out the textures, but the good news is it's pretty quick with our placeholder texture size. In my case, it took under 10 seconds. Back in Blender, we can go to File, Import, and USD. Find the file, and we can pretty much leave everything at the defaults. One thing to note is by default, it'll bring over all your textures as packed files, meaning they'll all just be stored within Blender. That's fine. If you wanna check out those textures, you could change this to copy, and it'll copy the textures into a directory alongside wherever your USD was located. Here, it'll create a folder called textures. We get the full scene and we even have lights and the preview textures that were baked. Now let's talk camera animation. The first scenario is just plain camera cuts with simple animation. We have one camera that goes from frame one to 100 and we jump to another camera that finishes out from frame 100 to 200. This could be an establishing shot of a building before cutting to a tighter shot of a character. In Blender, add a camera with Shift A for add or just the add menu and select camera. To jump into this camera, you can press zero on your number pad or go to the view menu and view active camera. A third way is to hold down the tilde key and choose view camera. Three ways, same result. In this camera, we can enter fly mode by pressing shift tilde. This enters that video game fly mode with the WASD keys and the mouse. To choose our start position, just move to it and left click. Now let's add our first keyframe. With the camera selected, press I for insert and insert a location keyframe. You can see that appears on our timeline. Let's go forward to frame 100 with the camera still selected, press G to grab, Z for the world Z axis, and Z again for the local Z axis. This will let us push that camera in. If it's moving too fast, you could hold down shift, which fine tunes any movement. Once it's where you want it, just left click to confirm, press I to insert another location keyframe. 
Add a new camera, our second camera. Now let's set up automatic shot switching. On frame one, select our first camera. In the timeline, with the camera selected, press Control B. B is for bind. In other words, this camera is now bound to that keyframe, meaning when it gets to frame one, it switches to the first camera. Go to frame 100, select the second camera, and Control B to bind this camera to frame 100. It's important to remember that Blender is context sensitive, meaning it knows which area your mouse is in. So for this to work, your mouse needs to be hovering over the timeline. If you ever need to delete a camera binding, just select it with left click and press X or delete. Now starting from frame 100, we can animate our second camera in the same way we did the first, just a bit closer to our subject. Now, when we play through from the camera view, we can see how we're jumping from shot to shot with all of our animation. By default, Blender creates a soft bezier curve for new animation. This has an ease in and ease out effect. For this camera movement though, where it feels like we're cutting to the camera mid movement, let's just set that to linear. Shift select both cameras, select all the keyframes in the timeline with A to select all, right click, interpolation, and select linear. Now it's a nice steady, constant movement in both cameras. Now we have our cameras and we've previewed them within Blender. Let's do a USD export. To do this, shift select both cameras and just go to file, export, and universal scene description or USD. You can uncheck everything but animation up here. Also, we just want selection only. We really only need the cameras since our scene was only placeholder. We don't worry about scale from Blender to Unreal because Blender USD handles the MPU by default. Name it after your specific shot. I'll call mine opening sequence, export USD. In Unreal, our USD plugin should already be enabled. Now, under Window and Virtual Production, you have a window called USD Stage. In USD Stage, go to File and Open, choose the opening sequence USD file we exported from Blender. We can see we have a new USD Stage Actor in our Outliner that has each of our cameras. We could have named these a bit better in Blender, but for now, they're Camera 1 and Camera 2. You can select these, but these are not imported into Unreal yet. This is just the staged preview. So to officially import them into the content browser, just go to Actions and Import. Once you select a location, we can leave the import options as default. Make sure Actors is on though, so it brings the cameras into our scene as actual actors. The USD file hierarchy will be placed within a folder that has the name of whatever your export file was, in our case, opening sequence. Within the new folder, we have a folder called Level Sequences and a single LS or Level Sequence underscore Opening Sequence. Just double click the sequence to open it. To make it work, all we need to do is one simple step. We have both camera actors, but we just need something called a camera cut track. To get this, just go to the plus button to add a track and choose camera cut track. This tells Unreal which camera to cut to at which frame. So on frame one, just press this plus icon on the cut track and let's add a new binding. This is the same as binding cameras to our timeline in Blender. Choose the first camera to preview the camera cut track. Just click the little camera preview icon and scrub through the animation. It already has the proper animation and knows how many frames it should last for. As expected, camera one moves in and stops suddenly at frame 100. That's where camera two starts in Blender. So let's add that camera binding as well. On frame 100, go to Add, New Binding, and choose the second camera. Note that this is a new binding. We're not adding the existing binding. The way you know you've got it right is the new binding will have a camera icon. If it has this sphere icon, that's not a camera. That's an actor. I'll be honest, this didn't click for me right away. So if you have to watch this a few times through, go for it. Just remember, cameras in Unreal are bound to the cut track in the same way cameras in Blender were bound to the timeline to define which frame they come in on. But the important thing here is we can scrub through the timeline and things look great. To 
render, just click the camera slate icon right here. You could choose your image output format. By default, it's an AVI video sequence. I like to use EXR. It's just a higher bit depth file that's kind of like shooting in a raw camera format. It just gives you more flexibility to play with. Resolution, this, this is really fun. In Blender, I typically don't go over 1920 by 1080 just because render time is really expensive. But here in Unreal, who cares? I'm going for 4K Ultra HD. Under Cinematic, let's use Cinematic Engine Scalability and Cinematic Mode. Under Advanced, you could totally turn on the Path Tracer and the Sample Settings. But for us, let's just leave our Path Tracer off. The last place to look is under Animation. You can double check the Start and End Frame. This looks good. I like a warm up frame count. When Unreal boots up a rendering, sometimes it takes a few frames to load in all the lighting, especially on more complex scenes. So I usually set this to like 24 frames just to give it one second of warm up to be safe. Now, when you press capture movie, Unreal is gonna eat up as much GPU memory as possible. That means if you really wanna avoid a crash, close Blender, close any videos you have playing and other monitors, and just really let Unreal have a moment to render this out. It might prompt you to save anything that's unsaved when you click capture movie. Mine captured in under a minute. Think about that, 4K resolution, 200 frames, and it's done in under a minute. I never thought I'd see the day. I'm trying to make a living and I don't need everyone here to subscribe to my personal website, but if about one in every 10 people watching this subscribe, or at least consider subscribing, I wouldn't have to keep asking. If you subscribe to offworlddepot.com, do me a favor and leave a comment below. Everyone, go give them a thumbs up because they're the reason this long video is totally free for you. So thank you to these supporters and back to the video. Let's test an advanced camera rig, something that really tests the flexibility of this USD camera pipeline. To get a few nice camera rigs in Blender, there's a secret add-on that actually comes with Blender, but a surprising amount of artists that I know don't know about it. So just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Camera. Here we have Add Camera Rigs. Just turn it on. Now, when we go to our Add menu with Shift A, not only do we have our standard camera, but we have a new dolly and crane rig as well. These are exactly what they sound like. They're meant to mimic real world camera equipment and the constraints of their movement. Let's get this expensive looking crane shot. Once we position the rig as a whole at our start frame, let's delete any old camera bindings by either deleting the cameras or by selecting the binding and pressing X or the delete key and select and bind the new camera to frame one, just as we did before with control B. Make sure your mouse is actually hovering over the timeline. With this camera active, we can start our animation. Let's open a second area by right-clicking a border and choosing split vertical. Then left-click to confirm placement. Let's have them both be the 3D viewport. On the right, let's jump into our camera view, and on the left, let's operate the control rig to enter pose mode, since this rig is an armature, just hit control tab, or on the top left menu here, choose the drop down that says object mode and go to pose mode. In pose mode, we have some controls. Our camera aim, this is where the camera always points to. Then we have two crane arms. The first is our bottom vertical arm, which we can scale up and keyframe that scale with the I key to insert and then insert a scale keyframe. Similarly, we have a horizontal arm. Both of these working together create complex movements that you would get with a real world camera crane. You can also keyframe the aim control location if you need it. Even though I can scale this infinitely, I try to keep a real camera crane in mind and not go too crazy with how far I push this. Now let's select all the controls in the viewport and all the keyframes in the timeline, right click, and once again, make this all linear movement, just interpolation and linear. Here's our camera movement in Blender. Now, this is the kind of movement you'd probably lose with an export. After all, we're relying on a complicated rig system within Blender. This is the magic of USD. Just select the camera. If you can't select it, you're probably still in pose mode. So make sure you've hit shift tab to jump back into object mode. 
Now simply do the exact same thing we did before. Select just the camera, we don't need the rig, export USD. Choose animation, I'll name mine crane sequence. That's literally all we need to do because in Unreal, when we follow the import steps from before, it just works. If you haven't seen this, I highly recommend it for adding organic looking camera shake to your cameras. It doesn't just use computer generated noise, but was actually tracked from real camera shake footage. But you can still control the intensity and the speed and everything else. You can even layer multiple shake layers on top of one another, like this one. I pressed record and I jumped into my camera, pressed shift tilde for fly mode, and then I pressed tab to activate gravity. Then I just walked around my scene like I was in a first person video game. On top of that, I added some Shakeify animation. This is honestly one of the more complex scenarios I could test with. We have layers of animation with multiple layers of camera shake on top of everything. Shakeify is a free add-on, so definitely not a sponsor, but highly recommended. So anyway, this is the result of all of that in Blender, the most complex test I could think of. Now let's do the exact same process. Select the camera, export selection in USD, open an Unreal stage, action, import, add the cut track and the level sequence, add a new binding with the proper camera, and voila. Is there anything this workflow won't bring over? Spoiler, no. Need to get your animated focus over from Blender. No problem, it already did that. And the camera details under focus settings and focus method, just change it to manual, and it's already animated with whatever you had in Blender. Need to bring over your focal length. No problem, it already did that too. I brought over this dolly zoom effect where I animated a camera location and focal length at the same time. I didn't change anything, it just had the data. So that's kind of it. Thanks Pixar for USD. It's kind of crazy how easy my camera animations just got from Blender to Unreal. This is an indie production dream. You could use this technique to build camera movements for your own short films, your game cutscenes, just all sorts of stuff. That's all for this one. Thanks.